Hello and welcome to Try Talking Sport, hosted by me, Joanne Murphy. You have come to the right place if you are looking for inspiration, encouragement, motivation and a little bit of entertainment. Whether you are an athlete, adventurer, endurance enthusiast or simply have an interest in sport, thanks for tuning in and being part of our adventure. And what an adventure it has been so far. Today we reach the milestone episode number 25. Thank you to everyone who has tuned in to date and we are ahead of schedule with our podcast releases due to COVID-19 and my very frenzied attempt to get some weekly positive vibes in your ears as we take on this race of a lifetime whilst we stay at home to protect ourselves, our families and the wider community. Speaking of races, many of you who are based in Ireland will have seen the statement from Triathlon Ireland this week, whereby in line with current International Triathlon Union and European Triathlon Union recommendations, Triathlon Ireland have taken the decision to postpone all sanctioned events up to and including the 30th of June 2020. This of course echoed by the British Triathlon Federation who also set June 30th as the date for the suspension of triathlon activity. As a result of this, many races across the country and indeed further afield have been cancelled or postponed. A necessary decision which has also brought lots of disappointment for athletes, race directors, race teams, race announcers, stakeholders, sponsors and all those involved in our wonderful world of triathlon and endurance sport. But with lives at risk and the world in a state of crisis, it comes as no surprise. Hopefully, by all of us playing our part in adhering to restrictions and staying at home, we will flatten the curve and come out the other side stronger than before. Now, it is hard to stay positive at times like this, but keeping on top of your routine with regular exercise and getting some fresh air do more than support your physical well-being. They support your mental and emotional well-being too. As athletes, we are very much resilient, we're focused and determined and having a clear goal and focus helps us to remain in a positive state of mind. But with so many events cancelled, it's hard to stay motivated. Fear not, there are plenty of challenges and goals that can be achieved from the comfort of your own home. You may have seen last week that Ironman kicked off their virtual racing plans. Castle Triathlon Series have also launched a virtual Easter challenge. And there's any amount of virtual running activities taking place, as well as people setting their own challenges, doing everything from running marathons and ultra marathons in their own back garden to others climbing the height of Everest on their stairs in their homes and much more to keep their fitness up, keep their mind and bodies active, all whilst adhering to the restrictions imposed on us. Our selfie isolation challenge is still going strong as well. It's a bit of fun and a distraction from COVID-19 whilst providing small goals and challenges each day to the participants. You can sign up on www.trytalkingsport.com for free. We are, of course, continuing our Facebook Live series on Try Talking Sport every Tuesday and Thursday night at 8.30pm Irish time with a whole host of guests lined up for chat and crack each week. So be sure to like our Facebook page and get involved in the conversation with us. In other positive news, I managed to get the turbo trainer set up in the house last week. This is a turbo trainer I bought back in 2016. Yes, 2016. And I never set it up. It's been in the box for almost four years. But hey, it's great to finally have my 2016 to-do list completed. I'm hopeful that the 2017 list will be done by the end of May. You gotta love your small wins in the midst of a global pandemic. Speaking of to-do list, my guest on today's show, Killian Moffat, gives some helpful tips for getting things done, staying motivated and positive in the face of a crisis, whether that is the global pandemic we are currently facing or an injury you are battling that is driving you mad. Killian, a 28-year-old former hurler turned triathlete, has enjoyed some super success during his short time as an advocate of the sport. Taking up triathlon in 2014, running a marathon in 2015, he set about chasing down an Ironman finish line in 2016 with his eyes firmly focused on getting to Kona to race at the Ironman World Championships. But just like the bumps in the road, it wasn't a smooth ride all the way. But he made it, accepting his Kona slot in 2016 at Ironman Wales, he became the youngest Irish athlete to qualify for the Ironman World Championships. In 2017, he raced at the Ironman World Championships in Kona. He also raced the Ironman 70.3 World Championships and challenged the championships in the same year. Now, while injury has set his plans to go pro on the back burner for the moment, that has not stopped him from pursuing his passion for triathlon and helping others in the process. Setting aside his plan to be a physiotherapist, he has set up a coaching business and What's Up Studio, providing support, motivation and encouragement to others in achieving their own sporting goals. Enjoy. 
Killian, for the listeners who mightn't know who you are, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up racing at the Ironman 70.3 World Championships and in Kona in a very short space of time. Yeah, so um, for people that don't know me, um, my background actually was kind of from GAA. I played hurling as a kid. I grew up playing hurling um, and knew nothing else. That was what I did. Um, And then it wasn't until I got to a stage of maybe, I think I was 21 at the time, where um, I'd been playing at a decent level all the way up and loved it. Couldn't see myself doing anything else until it got to a certain point where um, the enjoyment factor was gone. Um, I just found myself just dreading having to go to training or just uh, if, if I'm not enjoying something or not uh, wanting to, to put the work in I knew there was something wrong or something had to change so um, at that point in time I made a, a decision to take a break from the sport go traveling and um, see what else could I do or, or, or what else could I do to fill the void um, so that was maybe kind of 2014 was probably my first introduction to triathlon and uh, a, a funny introduction, uh, if I think back of my first race, I think my first race was um, the Carlingford Olympic Triathlon, and that was my first ever triathlon, and a thing that I'll always remember for that is I absolutely loved the race. I remember getting in, doing the swim, and again, fr- from a sporting background, I'm not a swimmer, I'm not a cyclist, I'm not a runner, um, so everything was, was relatively new to me, but um, I just I dived in and got it done, but... Um, I remember coming out of the swim in that race and getting into transition and setting about getting out of the wetsuit and preparing myself for the bike. And what I'll always remember is uh, my family and my now my current wife, uh, they're all there watching the race supporting me. And in transition one, my mom was came up to me and was there in my face thinking, what can I do to help you? Can I, can I uh, put my hands on? Can I, can I give you a hand with anything? I was like, when you go away, mom, you can't, you can't give any assistance in transition. So obviously got through transition myself, got through the race. And what I'll never forget is crossing that finish line and just the absolute buzz that you get from, from racing. Um, after that first race, I knew I was, I was hooked and that this was my new thing that I was going to kind of go all in on. Um, so that was my introduction to triathlon. That year, so 2014, first year racing, I essentially wanted to learn and experience as much of it as I could. So um, I just went around, did a lot of sprint races, a lot of Olympic races to practice, to learn, gain experience, see what it was like. Um, And then I remember finishing that year, I finished off doing the Lost Sheep middle distance and uh, really got humbled in that kind of race. First time doing something like that type of distance and how hard it was and how much I struggled. Uh, But I think any triathletes that are listening, we get some sense of satisfaction out of that suffering um, in training or in racing. And that was probably my first experience of hurting so much, but enjoying it at the same time. Uh, So that was my my first year doing triathlon. And just, I knew I was hooked. I knew I loved it. And I wanted to do more of it. What I did the following year then, actually 2015, um, we just, I focused on bike racing. So I just, I, I spent the season bike racing and, um, again, getting my ass handed to me by cyclists, uh, had to learn to switch out of a triathlete, triathlete mindset and learn the tactics of bike racing. Uh, that, that took a while, but again, I used that, that season as a, as a learning curve to improve my bike handling skills, improve my experience in, in racing and different distances. Um, and then the end of that season, so 2015, I did something that I'd never recommend to people to do now with the knowledge that I have and with my kind of current business and coaching business that I do is I I decided I wanted to do a, a marathon uh, in 2015. Reason being, I, I wanted to, to look at doing an Ironman the following season. So I said, okay, I'll tick off a marathon to see what it's like. So I crammed I crammed maybe two months, two, three months of, of running training uh, for the marathon and I, I got through it. It was it was a struggle. It was a, a hard challenge, but I, I got it done. Not the smartest way to approach it, but um, that was my first experience of learning the mental aspect of endurance sport and um, particularly long distance. That I remember being in that marathon, and a lot of this thing, a lot of this comes down to um, it's not so much a physical limitation, but more of a mental limitation. That when you see people who have stopped and started walking or who are at the side of the road thinking about giving in. Um, It's really kind of mind over matter at that stage that if you can force yourself just to keep moving, keep going, get yourself to the end 
I think that plays such a massive uh, toll in endurance sports that it's not necessarily the most talented or the most um, skilled person that can excel in endurance sports. It's, it's people that have the right mindset, the right attitude and, and put in the work um, can actually get get the results they want at it. So that was um, a really good learning curve for me from a mental side of things, how much um, it, it plays a role in your performance. So then, so then after Dublin, what happened? At the end of 2015, I decided, okay, this is what long distance is like. I, I like it. I kind of preferred long distance over the short distance. And Why? Uh, why? Um, so one thing, I love training. I actually love training and I, I love putting in long training days when I have the time. Um, just that feeling of pushing your body um, for long distances or long durations, spending that time inside your own head or with yourself it's amazing where your mind goes on long days like that i've had many good ideas or business ideas creep into my head when i've been out on long training days but i just i I really enjoyed the long distance that it wasn't short and all out efforts it was more of a of a people who are good at long distance are people who have a good skill of pacing themselves and i think that's one of my strengths one of my weaknesses would be the ability to, to hurt myself to the max but I know I can I can pace myself over long distance so I was I was drawn to that and it was at this time where I, I heard about Ironman and what this Ironman was and uh, first of all I was like yeah that's pretty mental if you're swimming 3 point AK, cycling 180 kilometers and then you have to run a marathon um, I was like that sounds that's that's a that's a big deal but I want to do it um, so I also then heard about Kona and obviously the Ironman World Championships at that time. And when I heard about it, first thing I did was went on to YouTube, looked up some previous races and some some video footage. And I remember seeing the videos and I was like, this place, like, it looks like magical or just out of this world in terms of the location, um, the people that are there. They're all bronzed, absolutely shredded, six packs everywhere, men and women, uh, all ages. And I thought this place looks really special. And what what do you have to do to get there? That was that was what I wanted to know. I was kind of like, what do I need to do to try and get there? And as, as oblivious or as naive as that may sound, um, I think that was probably a good thing that I didn't overthink it or or overcomplicate it. So again got onto the old Google and uh, found out, okay, obviously you need to qualify for Kona. You have to earn a qualifying slot. Um, and every every age group gets designated certain slots. So at that time I was in the 18 to 24 age group. So I had to decide then, okay, what race will I do where I can try and qualify? Um, and at this time I wasn't really working. Um, I'd actually, I just started an internship. So money was, wasn't really there. So logistically going over to the UK um, where I could drive over in the ferry, bring all my stuff with me. Um, that made the most sense uh, to pick a race there. So um, Ironman UK then became my target for 2016. So that was me putting a, a my, my, my target on um, first Ironman and setting a, a lofty goal of wanting to podium and, and get a Kona slot there. Uh, and whether that was me uh, talking through my arse or being um, very ignorant um, I just decided that's what I wanted to do and now I was going to try and work towards getting it done um, the, the challenge then that came after that was starting that internship so m- my background in terms of uh, education is um, I studied physiotherapy in UCD so I'm a qualified physio and my introduction to working as a physio was doing an internship in the sports surgery clinic in Santry and how I describe this is I describe it as a, an eight month internship or kind of slave labor for eight months where I was working a lot, 50, 60 hour weeks. And the only reward for it was every Friday afternoon, you could go upstairs to, to the office and collect your 50 euro note for your, for your, your good work during the week. Um, so that was, that, that's what I'd started when I decided I'd signed up for an Ironman and now I had to train and prepare for it. So one of the biggest things I learned at this time was um, how to maximize my available time to train. So previously what people had told me that if, if I wanted to do an Ironman or particularly try and qualify for Kona, that I needed to put in big hours, 15, 20 plus hour training weeks. But it never came down to a case where I was working long days, I was working weekends, that my time available to train 
was cut down. So I was like, okay, geez, like, okay, what, what, what can I do? So I figured out that I had about an average of 10 hours in the week that I could devote to training every week and be consistent with it, um, regardless of what work was like or commitments outside of work. And once I made that plan and followed a, a smart structured program um, leading up to my target race, it gave me the confidence and the belief that this is what I can do. I'm going to get it done and be consistent with it. And by doing that, I'd say over that six, seven, eight month period, because I was realistic with my available time, um, I think if, if I was to look back at my training plan, you could probably count the amount of sessions I missed over that eight month period on, on one hand um, because I wasn't over ambitious or unrealistic with what I could do. I just I was effective with my time and just got it done. Didn't overcomplicate it, knew my training zones and stuck with the plan. As hard as that was with the workload, um, it was manageable and sustainable. And I think the, the results then speak for, speak for themselves when you know you're doing what's suitable for you. So as the training went on and as the race season approached, I was making progress. I was ticking off PBs um, from 5K upwards in sprint and Olympic distance races. And then my first experience in, in the Ironman, so obviously Ironman UK being my first Ironman, um, and I remember you being there. Um, and when I, when I, one thing I remember from this race is the night before the race, I remember sitting in the hotel room with Grace and um, I took out just a piece of paper, a pen and paper, and I wrote down my race plan um, in terms of swim, transition one, bike, transition two, and run. And I wrote down my times that I was going to do, uh, again, based off my training and based off where I was at. I wrote that on a piece of paper. So I had a, a target in my head going into the race. Um, and then in that race, followed the plan, crossed the finish line. And if when I looked back on that piece of paper, I, I, I'm not lying when I say this, I probably still have that piece of paper, but I'd say there's literally five minutes um, in the difference between what I'd planned and uh, what I actually did. And that, that, that gave me uh, enough to take the third place in my age group, so to get on the podium. Um, and I actually managed just to miss Kona slot by, by one slot in that race. Um, so I, I, wasn't, I wasn't disappointed. It was my first race, and I absolutely loved it. I was delighted to get one of those MDOT trophies. And one of the biggest things um, that I took home from that race uh, and how big a deal Kona or the World Champs was is in the award ceremony um, the following day, um, I remember when they were doing the Kona slots and giving out the, the tokens and the, the lays to, to people. I remember one of the female winners, um, I can't remember what age group she was in, but she went running up on stage to get her slot. She was crying, tears rolling down her face. And she said this was one of the best days of her life because she's been trying to qualify for the last 17 years. And that kind of hit home with me to saying, okay, this Kona thing seems like a pretty big deal. So that shows kind of how maybe oblivious I was to it. But that, that was my first introduction to Ironman. And again, the long distance, absolutely loved it. Massive challenge mentally and physically, um, but wanted to wanted to do it again soon after. Didn't you come to Wales that year then? Wasn't it in Wales that you qualified for Kona? Yeah, exactly, yeah. So Yourself and Oliver. Was it Oliver Harkin as well qualified Oliver. that year? Exactly, yeah, yeah, the both of us were there, yeah. And so finishing third in, in UK, I missed out on a Kona slot by one slot. So I was like, this was my last, I was 24 at the time and it was my last year in that age group. So I was like, my fitness is there. I know I can do it. I need to get another race in. So we went home and spent the week contemplating what races are available. Will I, won't I? And decided, yeah, okay, Ironman Wales. Again, I can pack up the car, get on the ferry and drive over. Um, so that was just just under two months after UK. Um, I decided this is this is what we're going to do. This is where it's going to happen. And Ironman Wales, as people know, it's one of the challenging courses and particularly the bike course. It's one of the hilliest bike courses. Cycling being the strength, I, I was confident going into that race that, okay, this is my type of race. For anyone that hasn't gone to Wales or for anyone that is thinking about Wales, it's definitely one of the best races out there in terms of the atmosphere and uh, the buzz and excitement. The, the whole village gets behind it. 
I remember standing down on the beach and it's, it's like you're in the center of an amphitheater when everyone is looking down on you from the street, music's pumping and you're down there waiting to get in. You can't beat that. It was, it was, it's one of the best races I've, I've done. But once the race started, it was, it was going really well for me. Swam well, got out on the bike, was, 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 I was pushing well on the bike. And from what I, from what I heard from afterwards, I was, I was taking the lead in my age group by about 20 minutes. Uh, I was winning my age group by and um, when we hit about 170 kilometers in the bike course, I had we were coming down um, a descent quite fast around a bend, and all of a sudden I got a, a flat or a blowout on my front tire, and I had to make the split second decision to either keep going into the wall or hit the brakes and try and stop. So I just I jammed on the brakes, ended up coming over the handlebars and hitting the ground really hard, and. For anyone who's who's had an accident on the bike or fallen on the bike, it's it's quite a shock to the system and um, you can be quite shaky after it. I remember when I managed to, to peel myself off the ground and get over to the side of the road, first thing you, you obviously check is, is the bike okay? Is my bike still working? <laughs> um, and then secondly, it was like, okay, is my body okay? Yeah, can I move everything? And I did. I was, there was blood from my head, but I was able to move everything and I was functioning. So I uh, had to set about trying to fix the puncture. And obviously with my, uh, the adrenaline going and being shaky and uh, shook up from the, from the accident, I ended up breaking all my tire levers, pinching any of the tubes that I had left and used up all my spares. So there I was standing at the side of the road, 10k left in the bike leg, thinking this is going to be a, a DNF or, or it did not finish. And that those, those three letters don't go with me. So I was like, what can I do? Get on the bike and just cycle, or cycle on the flat. So just got on the bike cycled the last 10 kilometers going uphill was fine but going downhill was very treacherous and you'd have to kind of clip one foot out to save yourself from wobbling or um coming off and but i managed to get back to transition two and offload the bike and i was like right i'm here my body's moving um if i have to walk the marathon i'm going to get to that finish line because like that i didn't come over here to not finish the race, not get the finisher medal or the finisher t-shirt or have the DNF next to my name. So um, whatever I have to do, I'm just going to get myself to that finish line. So that's what I did. I got out on the run course and I just plowed on, persevered, um, just kept going. Didn't worry about anyone else or anything else. Just I was getting to that finish line. Obviously time and everything went out the window. Race plan went out the window. Um, just had to get to that finish line. And it wasn't until I crossed that finish line that um, – Grace had told me that I still managed to hell on to third place in my age group, which I was I was delighted with. And funny enough, then the following day, that secured a Kona slot for me. Even though my plans for a, a race performance were uh, put out the window on race day, you just have to adapt to situations on the day. You have to just persevere to the finish line. Um, don't worry about anyone else or anyone anyone else you're you're racing against or. In an Ironman, anything can happen. It's such a long day that you just need to focus on yourself and do what you have to do to get to that finish line. Um, and you'll be, you can deal with whatever happens then after that. So uh, it's it's not the story I wanted to have in terms of how I qualified, but it, it is still quite a good story to have that. That was where um, I was able to luckily grab a grab a slot for, for Kona. In listening to you to tell the story, Killian, the, the one thing that's coming really clear to me is is the amount of focus that you have really you know listening to you talk about the work you were putting in at the sports injury clinic the 10 hours doing your training um getting to Bolton taking the learnings from Bolton to apply them to Wales that it just it's all about the focus yeah and I think it's a characteristic that uh that goes with me in in all areas of my life if it's training or if it's business um and I think it's 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 quite a common characteristic with triathletes the motivation and the focus is there. And I think what I love about the sport and one of the reasons why I'm on here talking to you or being able to, to tell people about the story is it's not me boasting or uh, bragging that this is what I did. It's I'm an average person in terms of um, there was no reason that I was going to be good at endurance sports. Um, when I was a hurler, I was um, I was big, I was strong, I was heavy fit for the sport that I was doing but I hated running I didn't do any endurance sports um but when I got into triathlon then when when I get into something I'm all in it's it's okay how can I be the best at this or how can I improve myself at this triathlon is a sport that rewards hard work 
dedication and consistency. It, you don't have to be talented. You don't have to be skilled at it. Um, obviously, swimming is the, is the one where it's a very technical sport, but you can learn that. It takes time, but the bike and the run and triathlon training in general is if you're smart about your training, if you're willing to put the work in, you can get better, you can uh, improve yourself. And there's no reason why anyone can't achieve something like what I did in terms of getting to Kona. Like I said, I'm not an endurance athlete. On paper, it's not like someone said, yeah, this guy is going to be good enough to get there. I just decided this is what I wanted to do. I created a plan that was going to allow me to try and get there. I may have got there. I may not have got there. It could have taken a year. It could have taken six years. But I was just relentless in the pursuit of that goal. And I think in all areas of life, if you decide you want to do something and you go go about starting or making it happen, you can do it. It's just a matter of when, when it happens as opposed to if it happens. And the grounding, I suppose, that you would have had in sport as a hurler. I mean, you played at the highest level for your county. So, you know, you were dedicated to hurling. You were dedicated to the sport as well. So you be very successful as a hurler. Yeah. So obviously hurling was 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 my was my life up until the age of 21. And if someone told me back then that uh in a few years, you're not going to be playing hurling. I told them, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. That, that doesn't even make sense. But I learned a lot uh, growing up and playing at those levels in terms of the sacrifice. Well, not really sacrifice. If, if it's something you love, I don't think of it as a sacrifice. But the hurling got to a point where I didn't love it. So it did become a sacrifice. You're, you're following something that you want to do. So when you want to do, you make time to do it. You create your lifestyle to support that goal or that desire um, and I think that's one of the biggest things that people can benefit from is having that environment that allows them work towards their goals that it's not very you, you can't really be selfish with it that if you've got a family or or kids or a partner that I think everyone needs to be on board uh, with your plans and your goals that you're not training and putting as much time into your training as you can that you need to be able to um, involve everyone with it and that's what will allow you to succeed so support network for me growing up with my family and my parents they always supported me in what I wanted to do and same now in terms of uh, triathlon training in my coaching business my my wife my my family the people that I live with we all um, we all work together to to make things work that were what one of the one of the biggest things I learned and one of the biggest things I can advise people to implement into their into their life is uh, make make morning make early morning your best friend if you can get up and get training done or get your work done um early morning it, it, it sets you up for the day it allows you to spend the day then getting your work done or any other things you need to get done likewise if if shit hits the fan during the day and now the training session you're supposed to get done isn't going to get done rather than you being frustrated or feeling guilty you can't get it done if you get that done in the morning or set yourself up uh, start the day well by getting your session in I think that's one of the key components to being successful there's many people CEOs business owners entrepreneurs that are quite successful but quite busy with their work they can still be successful in a sporting career because I think it's, it's that mindset and it's that focus and that planning that when you have structure and planning to your week regardless of what level you're at what sport you're doing what career you have that's what makes things easy and that's what allows you to tick things off each day, each week. And it's those daily habits, those daily routines that add up over weeks, over months. And when it comes to Ironman, you're, you're always building, you're always developing. Every year, every season, you're always adding on top of it. And it's the little things that matter as opposed to getting in a massive training week this week and then next week is going to have to be scaled back because you're wrecked. Um, so there's a lot of things to learn there. And I suppose in the current situation that we're in, which is COVID-19, where routines and social norms have been absolutely smashed out the window because we're not able to get out and swim. We're not able to get out and do a big, long bike ride. You can get out and do a run 2K from your home for a bit of exercise or whatever. Now, I know people are doing bits and pieces yeah. in the back garden or they might be doing extra loops up and down that 2K radius. But for the most part, most people are being socially responsible and not training outdoors when when they shouldn't be it's interesting that you say about the routine piece because in dealing with the anxiety and the issues around COVID-19 having a routine now is more important than ever just to get us through day to day as opposed
opposed to looking at six months down the line? A hundred percent. Like the situation we're in now, it's 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 a strange one. It's it's uncertain times in terms of the race season has been put on hold. Races are being postponed. The, the uncertainty of races that people have been training for are they going to go ahead? When will they go ahead? Um, and that's where it comes down to being able to focus on what you can control. All of those things we're not in control of at the moment, but we can control what we do on a daily basis, um, both training, both our work, if we're trying to learn how to work from home, um, but also anything else in our day that now more than ever, being able to establish a routine or structure to your days is is going to have such a positive impact on your life because it's very easy when you're stuck at home to get out of habit or routine um, or, or get lazy. Like it would be very easy to say, sure, races, I don't know if they're going to happen. I'm just going to sack it off and I'll, I'll sleep in or I'll eat the fridge empty or whatever. Um, whereas now more than ever, if you were able to implement your routines that plan out your days, you can. it's amazing how productive you can be when you plan out your days in advance that if you knew, okay, I'm going to, I can still maintain my training. As you said, Turbo training is absolutely hidden, is going through the roof at the moment. And I think that's a good thing for people who weren't into turbo training before because it's one of the best tools. Turbo, turbo training is one of the best tools you'll ever get for, for improving your bike. Um, but we can still be active. Treadmill, turbo trainer, stay within a two kilometer radius, focus on staying active in any other forms. If it's strength and conditioning at home, if it's core work, if it's yoga or Pilates, it gives people an opportunity to take that 100% focus on triathlon training and racing and be able to step back a little bit and stay fit, stay healthy, stay fresh, stay prepared for what's going to come down the line. And routine is key. When you have a routine or a plan set out, the chances of following through with that plan is, is so much higher than if your training plan is in your head or if your structure is in your head. When you physically write it down and plan it out, you're going to get that and tick that off and you'd be surprised with how much you can get done each week when you physically write down. It could be five things you want to do each day, but when you write it down and tick them off, it can be as simple as that. And as that builds on each week, five things this week becomes 10 things next week, 15, etc. They all add up to, to bring you on in life and training and fitness and everything. And there's something very satisfying about writing down your to-do list or your list yeah. of jobs for the week, whether that's I don't know, cleaning out the fridge or uh, yeah. doing a routine in your garden or, you know, setting up your home office, whatever it is. Um, it's all about kind of setting mini goals for yourself every week and actually ticking the boxes every week as well is, is very satisfying. But aside from all of this uh, situation that we currently find ourselves in, I want to ask you about the transition from being very much in a team environment as a hurler, both with your club and county, to then being a triathlete where you're pretty much doing it for yourself and by yourself for the most part. I know we can join clubs and you can do turbo sessions with other people and spin classes and the gym and all that kind of stuff. But being in that tight knit team environment and moving to an individual sport and that transition, how did you find that? Yeah, so that was it was a big change, definitely a big a big change and a big transition. For me, it was it was it was one of the hardest decisions I made, giving up the team sports and giving up my hurling career to to do something different. There was a few things that I found hard with the hurling, and a few things were your schedule is fixed. So my training sessions um, were fixed on certain days every week. I had no control over that. So there was that. There was a time where. I was playing with my club at under 21 and senior level. I was playing with UCD, my college. I was playing with the, the Dublin County team at my age. And all of that was going on at the same time. So every evening during the week, the weekends were always allocated to a training session or a match for one of those teams. So my time uh, was out of my control and I couldn't go on holidays. I couldn't plan things that I wanted to do outside of it. So that was one downside of, of the team sport side of it. Going into triathlon then, the sense of freedom and the sense of control that I had over my training, that I could train when I want, I could train how I wanted, I could train on my own, I could get a few mates and train with them, but also the freedom to travel to races. So if, if I never gave up hurling, I'd never, I probably would never have gone to Hawaii to, to have that experience. So what I really enjoy about the sport of triathlon is you can train whenever and however you want. 
it doesn't matter what your what your life is like or what your work schedule is like you can always fit your training around uh, your days it doesn't matter if you if you've kids if you've busy work just 24 hours in a day when you can get your sessions in as suits you so the other side of it then is from the GA side of it obviously when I left that community obviously I lost a lot of friends from that side of it because the GA is like a close kick close-knit community and when you step outside of it um, at that time they didn't really understand it they couldn't understand you're giving this up and you're doing this other sport um, so that was a that was a tough time for me that uh, my group of friends that I grew up with that I spent my days training and, and playing matches with that essentially that was left behind but coming into triathlon then biggest thing with triathlon is that it's the community element of it is, is huge the good thing about triathlon is at the end of the day, everyone is racing against themselves. They're racing against the clock. Um, yes, you can be competitive and you have people in your age group that you're racing against. But at the end of the day, you're always training to try and improve your time, try and improve yourself. And the difference between being in the, the locker, being in the, the change rooms before a GA match and getting pumped up to, to hammer the other opposition compared to rocking up to uh, transition in a triathlon and buzzing off everyone else that's there everyone's in a good mood everyone's excited everyone's nervous everyone's chatting to you um that that's huge and just the community aspect of it is is amazing and what i have developed now since i got into triathlon and even from a business and a work side of things is is it, 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 it's become a lifestyle um which i really really love my training my work the community i have the new friends i've made the groups that i've made uh, friends with it's it's just everyone is on it, the same journey but in all different shapes and forms so all my happy experiences from hurling I'll, I'll never forget but I'm also really really grateful that I got into this sport and uh, I've never looked back since I've gotten into it and then to think that you know you've gotten to Kona and you've gotten to the uh, Ironman 70.3 World Championships as well and I believe you also got to the Championships for Challenge as well yeah that was a busy year. <laughs> a busy year. And and of course as well then, Killian. I suppose, because you're still quite young, but you have gone and set up your own business within the sport. So not only are you walking the walk, but you're talking the talk as well, because you're now helping others to achieve their sporting goals. Yeah, so to be honest with you, um, obviously, as a qualified physio, naturally speaking, people are okay, you're a qualified physio, you need to work as a physio. But I found out that I didn't really enjoy it and I, it wasn't really suited for me and I couldn't see myself doing that as a career. So when I got into triathlon and I started racing and then even say when I started having some success early on with performances and results, then people started kind of reaching out and asking for tips or some guidance and some help. And I learned quite a lot about how to train uh, and how to approach triathlon training for regardless of who you are what ability you're at and I, I felt like I figured out this is how you can actually get good at this sport um, and I wanted to be able to apply that to anyone who wanted to help with it or, or guidance with to share that knowledge share that experience so naturally that became part of my kind of business when I was transitioning from physiotherapy to um, a coaching business and, and a studio is that people started asking for help and guidance and I said okay I can actually help these people and the, the kick and the buzz that you get out of people being able to um, achieve their own goals. And what, what I found is motivation is never lacking in anyone that does triathlon or anyone that's doing a certain sport. The motivation is always there, but it's it's the guidance and the structure and the planning that they lack or that they need. And I think when people have a plan or someone to, to work with, to bounce ideas off, to figure out what's going to be best for them as an individual and then start working on that plan to achieve those goals for me it doesn't matter if that's someone that's trying to qualify for Kona or if that's someone that wants to do their first sprint triathlon or do their first five kilometer when you get someone that starts on that journey and you see them through it and they complete that goal or complete that target it doesn't matter what level that was or what that target was the, the satisfaction that you get I absolutely love that feeling and if anything that's 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 one of the reasons why I got into my current coaching business because I get really good satisfaction of being able to help others achieve their own goals regardless of who they are what age or what ability they're at and you've recently launched your what's up studio rather than whatsapp your what's up <laughs> studio at uh, wheelwork so tell us a little bit about that Killian and what exactly yeah. you're offering your customers yeah, so one of the first Watt Bike Studios in Ireland. Um, so essentially why I wanted to set up this studio was because 
it provides an environment for any athletes to come and train together in a supporting, motivating environment. I wanted to set up a studio where it didn't matter if you're new to the sport or if you're a top age group athlete or whatever level you're at that I wanted to be able to have a place where everyone could train together. In in the Watt Bike Studio, the way we work is we all work together that everyone's training off their own zones and their own parameters. So we're all working together. We're all pushing each other together. And that motivating factor is huge. And I think just creating that group environment is what I wanted to achieve with that studio. And it's been able to grow now over the last year or so, which has been really good to see. Um, so we essentially, it's, it's it's a Watt Bike Studio where we've got 13 Watt Bikes and we run um, classes during the week and at the weekends. Um, and every session is tailored to each individual. That, like I said, if you're doing a sprint triathlon or training for an Ironman, or if you're just a cyclist or you just want to get fit, that we tailor the sessions towards you to make you fitter, make you stronger. And my whole philosophy and method with training and coaching is if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So I like to work with numbers. So we've got power, heart rate, speed and cadence. Busy age groupers need to be smart with their training time. So having a, a studio or a facility for them to come on their way home from work in the evening, or we've got a good strong morning crew that come for a nice 6, 6 a.m. session during the week on their way to work, it allows them to get their training done in, a, in, a, in an environment where they're with like-minded athletes who are, again, striving towards um, achieving their own goals everyone's on the same journey but their own goals are specific to them so I wanted to create a, a hub to, to allow that to happen and to grow that uh, that community which again uh, really really challenging to establish it and grow it but really really rewarding to see um, the success that it's had and also how much people have been enjoying it and, and benefiting from it it's been it's been a learning curve for sure and uh, having to diversify then during uh, the covid-19 crisis um the doors yeah. were opened back in late january they opened and and now we're in well i suppose we're in the first week of april killian i want to ask you who was the biggest influence for you because by listening to you here what i get is a sense of you in influence quite a lot of people and you inspire a lot of people as well with what you've done and um, I know Caroline Heffernan who was my very first guest on the podcast yeah. uh, absolutely sang your praises in terms of the <laughs> coaching and training that you gave her to get to Barcelona as the first ever uh, Irish person with the cystic fibrosis to do a full distance Ironman so my long-winded question to you is who's been the biggest influence for you in sport over the past number of years? Yeah, so it's a good question. Um, there's definitely been a few big influencers for me. People that introduced me to the sport initially were kind of Rob Cummins and Ashley Coppinger, uh, my wife's mother. When I was finishing up playing hurling, I was suffering. I had I dislocated my shoulder a few times and had to get surgery. And while I was out rehabbing that, I got a, a bike and a turbo trainer in Wheelworks. And essentially, that was my introduction to cycling and getting into that. And um, learning about triathlon then and Ironman. So um, learning about what they've done and getting some experience and from themselves, that kind of inspired me to get into the sport and see what I could do. Another person then that I admire quite a lot and who has taught me a lot and I've, I've, I've probably hounded him for questions and see what, what other information I can get from is Brian McChrystal. And he's a, obviously the Irish Ironman record holder, but he's, he's had a similar background before getting into triathlon in terms of uh, playing in group sports, professional footballer, um, and then losing love of sport and then getting into triathlon. And um, over the years, I've, I've hounded him, um, asking questions, seeing how much I could learn from him. I, I spent some time kind of when I was cycling, I spent some time training with him and what he's done in the sport, how he approaches his training, how he approaches his racing. He doesn't care who he's racing against. Um, he's there to do his best and see how far he can push himself. I think you probably won't mind me saying, but I think he's maybe 38 years of age at the moment. So he's definitely a big inspiration for me in the sport in, in terms of I'm 28 um, my, my target in triathlon is how far can I go in triathlon, particularly long distance, 70.3 in Ironman. And having someone like him at the pinnacle of the sport is something that I strive for in my training. So he's definitely had a, a massive positive influence on me in the sport and what can be achieved with, again, relentless, consistent work over years and years. 
I think a lot of people can uh, really relate to Brian as well because he tells it how it is. Um, he doesn't hold back when things are absolutely shit. And when yeah. they're great, he tells you that they're great. Um, and there's quite a, a, a lovely honesty about him as well. I've hounded him to get him on the show as well. So hopefully we'll <laughs> get him over the next uh, the next few weeks. I saw something today where he was on a, sw- a Zwift ride and yeah. his uh, iPad cut out in the middle of it. Um, He's but a good yeah, man for getting some funny videos out on, uh, on social is, media. He is potentially going to the uh, the Olympics with uh, Dunica and then his sister Eve, who was on the show yeah. uh, two episodes ago with Katie George and Levy. Um, you know, both powerhouses uh, of athletes and big inspirations for, for a lot of people. If you were to look back over the last few years, what has been the highlight so far for you and what's been the low light? Yeah, so highlight for me was obviously definitely experience in, in Kona. Getting there in, in essentially my first year of doing long distance triathlon, that was definitely my my biggest uh, achievement so far. And it was one of the best experiences I've ever had. And um, I definitely plan on getting back there again in the future. But hands down, that was definitely my biggest achievement uh, and highlight. If I was to pinpoint then the low light, and it's some people might know already, one of the biggest things I've struggled with over the last um, year or two years is uh, injury. A lot of it kind of stems back from that kind of heavy crash in Wales back in 2016. Um, I ended up actually suffering badly from concussion a few days after the race and was out of work for several weeks. And uh, I remember when I did get back training in 2017 that my body just felt not right, but there wasn't any pain. So I trained through it and raced through it and Towards the end of 2017, after I'd finished the race season um, and got back training then into the 2018 season is when I started getting some issues with my knees, some injuries with my knees. And uh, to be honest with you, one of my biggest struggles over, since then is trying to get on top of that injury. It, it was My body was like knocked out of balance and things got pulled and, and tight and in, in certain areas. And to be honest, I've been working on trying to unravel all that damage ever since so one of the struggles has been after achieving so much so soon and my goal in this sport is can I get up to chasing a a, a pro license get them taken out of pro license and I was moving closer and closer to there and since then it's all been put on the back burner in terms of progress has been halted because of this injury so just definitely a lot of lessons I've learned and I've come to appreciate quite a few things that Number one is uh, how grateful you should be when we're fit and healthy to be able to swim, cycle, run or exercise without pain or injury. That oftentimes we can take that for granted. Another side then is the mental aspect or the mental health side of this sport that a lot of times people struggle with injury or maybe not achieving their goals. And that has a a negative uh, effect on their mental health. Uh, but you never see that or hear that as much on the social media side of things. It's usually the positive stories or the the winning races or PBs that you see posted everywhere. Whereas suffering these setbacks and suffering these injuries or having these hard times is is really really common, really normal, and part of the the journey. But a lot of people might not have the support network to to deal with that or the capabilities to be able to deal with that. So um, I've been really grateful over the last two years while being injured to be able to, I guess there's been a lot of highs, a lot of lows, um, definitely some dark patches there that I just want to be able to train and race and go back to where I was, but I haven't been able to do that yet. I'm still working on it. Things that have allowed me to um, work through that is having the business there to focus on, to be able to put the head down and grow that, help others do their training, get their goals achieved and the success they've seen and that's the satisfaction I've had working with them has has got me through it. So I definitely think one of the biggest things, anyone that's struggling with an injury or struggling with um, any kind of setbacks in their own training, that there's nothing wrong with talking to people about it or or expressing how you're feeling with others because the more you talk about it, the more open you are with it, the better it is and the easier it is then to get a plan put in place for you to overcome it and to get back on track and feeling good. So injury is, is a tough thing to deal with, but I think you can learn quite a lot from it and you can come out the other side a, a better person overall once you have the right tools to, to manage it. I think you said uh, a very important word there about being grateful and gratitude and how lucky we are to be able to do what we do and, and to have the privilege to be able to swim bike and run and I think that the positivity or the positive attitude in overcoming the challenges that we have is half the battle really isn't it? 
Hundred percent. And one of the biggest things I'll tell people is to to focus on what they can do. So, as if I take myself for an example, over the last two years, I really haven't been able to run or cycle very much, but I could still swim. So I, I swam and I spent time working on my technique, increasing my swim volume. So my swimming has improved massively over that time. My bike and run may be put on holes, but I knew I could still swim. So I was able to focus on that and that kept me going, kept me uh, in a positive mindset that I knew when I get back to training properly, my swimming is going to be at a, at a much better level than it was when I left off. So always focus on the things you can do to improve yourself, regardless of what shape or form that takes. So when you do get back, Killian, and when we come out the other side of COVID-19, what's on that big uh, vision board for you in terms of racing? Uh, to be honest with you, the number one thing that's on that board is to be able to get up and be able to cycle or run or swim and not have to think about any injury or anything like that. My motivation is still there. So the goals stay the same. I'm still looking at getting back to the level I was at and chasing down that pro license. I'm more kind of a performance orientated person. So I really want to target over the next few years, uh, what performance can I do over the Ironman distance? So I don't know if it's something that's realistic or unrealistic, but uh, Brian McChrystal, again, setting the standards, Irish Ironman record holder. How close to that record can we get? Ooh, there's a challenge for Brian McChrystal. Did you just throw <laughs> down a challenge at Brian McChrystal, did you? So Brave he's, he's, man. He, he's 38, I'm 28. So there's, there's, it, it's a long, long, long term goal. But again, you need something to aim for. That is true. Uh, and actually, I did see on your Instagram feed uh, during the week that you have set up your own challenge uh, for people to complete. Do you want to tell me a little bit about that? I know we have the selfie isolation challenge, which yeah. is a bit of fun uh, and a bit of fitness activity thrown in and supported by the Facebook group. But you have a much tougher challenge going on for people if they're looking for something a little bit stronger. Yeah, so the, the challenges are always a great way, and particularly when we're stuck now at home and stuck in the current situation to to keep you focused, keep you productive and, and active. The challenge that I've set out, it is a quite tough challenge. It's a 66 day challenge. And there's there's certain things that you need to be able to do each day. There's no deviation from the from the plan. If you if you miss something on one day, you're back to day one. The reason why I started it is give people structure to the day. So they have things that they have to do every single day. And that's in the form of uh, some form of exercise. So it's at least 60 minutes of exercise a day. It's been able to be uh, following uh, a certain way of eating. And again, that's specific to each individual, but make a plan for yourself in terms of what you're going to eat, what you're allowing yourself and what you're not allowing yourself and stick with it. Drinking water. It's not just training related. There's, there's things just from self-improvement, like every day spend a few minutes each day reading 10 pages of a book, learning or self-developing yourself. So it's a program or a challenge that's aimed at uh, improving people from a mental side of things and uh, the physical transformation they'll make from it is huge as well. So if anyone wants more details on it or is interested in things they're, they're able for it, um, all those all the details of the challenges are on my, my social media pages. So uh, if you feel up for the challenge, if you feel like you can manage it, check it out and, and drop me a message, see if you're up for it. And they can find you across uh, Instagram and on the website as well. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Talk to me about being married. Ooh, yeah, recently married. So yeah, got married August last year. Got engaged the, the day before we raced Ironman Kona in 2017. So that's always a nice uh, a nice engagement story to tell over the years. But yeah, me and Grace, we got married last year. Had a great, great wedding, uh, great honeymoon. We had a double, double honeymoon. Then after that, we went and spent just over a week in Santorini, one of the Greek islands. Highly recommend it. It's a, it's a really good spot to go. And then we went on there and spent a week in Italy uh, traveling a bit. And then her cousin actually got married there as well. So since then, essentially, to be honest with you, not much has changed, really. The only thing that changed is that I now wear a ring. <laughs> Um, me, me and Grace have been together a long time. We're nine years together, so it was just yeah, just making it official, really. Very good, very very insightful uh, uh, across our conversation this evening. Certainly, lots of food for thought for people who may be feeling um, demotivated or maybe a little bit uncertain about where their triathlon season is going to go. And for those who who need a little bit of a kick in the arse, what would you say to them now? Yeah, so for anyone that, that's struggling uh, with motivation or, or focus. Um, what I say for them is, is set themselves some short term goals, not race related. It could be on a weekly basis that even if it's a case of, OK, for next week, I'm going to 
exercise or get three or four sessions in during the week is make a plan for each week. The short-term goals or short-term focus will get them through week by week as the uncertainty then will unravel over the next few weeks. So create short-term goals, keep yourself focused. If anyone's struggling or if anyone uh, is unsure what to do or just needs someone to chat, feel free to, to drop me a message or drop me an email. I have a lot more free time on my hands at the moment, so I'm always happy to, to help or, or give some advice to anyone that needs it. But um, short-term goals, give yourself a focus and give yourself something to work towards. Wise words from a young man who has achieved so much. Uh, thank you, Killian, for joining me tonight. And uh, I look forward to calling you down the finish line of your next Ironman race as a professional athlete uh, when you get there. And I have no doubt that you will overcome the injuries and get there. So thank you so much. And please stay safe uh, during the COVID-19 crisis. No, thanks very much, Joanne. Great to chat with you. Thanks again for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget you can get in touch with any feedback or guest suggestions by emailing me on trytalkingsport at gmail.com. And that's try with an I, not a Y. Don't forget, we are looking for reviews on uh, Apple Podcasts as well. So if you're enjoying the shows, please give us a positive review. We would really appreciate it. And don't forget, you can tune into our live Facebook chats on the Try Talking Sport Facebook page on Tuesdays and Thursday nights at 8.30 p.m. Until next time, wash your hands, stay safe, stay at home. Oh, and don't forget to enjoy a multitude of Easter eggs this weekend.